Welcome to Virtual Face-to-Face -face with President Bruce Gerald. I'm Alex Lukowski, Executive Director of Media Relations. It's been said that faith makes possible that which circumstance renders implausible. With those words, Archdiocese of Baltimore Archbishop William Lorry began to explain in a Baltimore Sun op-ed last year the remarkable history and the continuing impact of an amazing woman, Mother Mary Lang. Born in Cuba in the 1780s, Elizabeth Clarice Lang came to the U.S. settling in Baltimore in the early 1800s. She saw here a great need for the education of children in the city's rapidly growing free black population. Lang founded the first religious congregation of women of African descent in the United States, the Oblate Sisters of Providence. The school the sisters created 192 years ago was the first Catholic school for children of color in America, and it continues to this day, now known as St. Francis Academy. Mother Lang and the Oblate Sisters of Providence endured racism, poverty, and many other challenges, providing night classes for women, vocational training, and crisis support services, along with the education of children. That need and so much more continues to this day. What Archbishop Lori described as that pervasive inequity and inability to ac access quality education. It's in the spirit of Mother Mary Lang, he said at last year's breaking, that we are putting our determined efforts and resources in service to the young people of our community by breaking ground for the first Catholic elementary school in the city of Baltimore in nearly six decades. And it is an incredible school, opening with 400 pre-K through eighth grade students next fall and growing to more than 500 in the first few years. It's three level, 66,000 square foot structure located on the west side of MLK Boulevard, right across from UMB and just north of the biopark. The school includes a STEM suite with a science lab, maker space and robotics center. It has a digital media center, art and music rooms and a regulation sized gymnasium with a performance stage. And outside, there's a soccer and lacrosse field with an exercise circuit. Total cost around $24 million. The Archdiocese expects 80 to 90% of the students will need tuition assistance, and they've lined up an array of support, something like a million dollars in grants and aid for the first year with public and private partners. Students, fundraising, building design, even the naming of the new school have all been part of a shared community project. Longtime community and civil rights activist Ralph Moore has called Mother Lang the mother of literacy in this area. And Moore and others, along with Archdiocese leadership, have taken Lang's cause even further, calling on the Vatican to canonize Lang and make her the first African-American saint. Mother Lang is already considered a servant of God. That's the first step towards sainthood. Here, we see an inspirational story, and her namesake looks like it will be every bit as inspirational for the students. Joining us today are Jim Selliger, the Chancellor of Education for the Archdiocese of Baltimore, and Alicia Jordan, Principal of Mother Mary Lang Catholic School. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. Else. Great. I need to tell the audience quickly, this program is being recorded and will be posted on the UMB homepage, umaryland.edu. In a little while, you'll have a chance to ask questions and make comments yourselves. Look for the chat button at the bottom of the screen, select chat with host and write your question there. When the time comes, we'll call on you by name to ask your question. Don't worry about your microphone, I will unmute it for you. Now here's your host, UMB President, Dr. Bruce Gerald. Thank you, Alex, and it's a great pleasure to be here. I'd like to welcome all of you who are participating virtually with us today. It's always a great pleasure and I look forward to these events each week. It was about two and a half years ago that uh, I was with Jay Perman in his uh, office there at UMB. And, and some of you who have been there, there's a broad expanse of windows that looks out over West Baltimore. And uh, Jim Seliger uh, uh, came to visit us uh, one uh, morning and he, he came up to those windows and some of you may remember from those windows, you can see Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard with a lot of traffic and then right past MLK Boulevard, right in line with our office, uh, was this big grassy lot. And I believe, Jim, it was 12 acres, you told us. And it <laughs> sloped uh, it sloped uh, in one particular direction. And he says, I'm going to build a school there, and we want UMB to be a partner. And we, of course, said, well, of course, we want to be a partner in that. Uh, it, it's another step in the whole transformation of our West Baltimore community and neighbors. And, and of course, What's happened is, as I return to my office periodically and look out those windows, it went from a green grassy lot 
uh, to some concrete and trucks and dirt uh, to a, a steel frame to a building and now a playing field. It has been a remarkable transformation uh, and, and I'm so pleased to have that. I'm going to call it on our campus because that's essentially immediately adjacent to our north campus and immediately adjacent to our community campus where the biopark is. So it's a great new neighbor to have in place. Uh, and I so look forward to uh, the time when your school um, opens. So I'm going to start with Jim, you first, because I believe you've got something to show the audience. So the floor is yours. Well, thanks, Bruce. You know, before I show an animation of the new school, I want to thank you and Alex for giving us the opportunity uh, to spend some time with you today to talk about our exciting project. Uh, Alicia Jordan, who's our principal, is an experienced principal and was named to the position this past summer. And uh, Alicia will spend some time talking as well, but she's been extremely busy uh, getting the school ready for us to open up in September of 21. Uh, construction is moving along at a very fast clip. Uh, as Alex gave a good summary of what's going to be in the school, I'm going to show you in, a in an animation. However, this this has been a, this has been a journey, Bruce. Um, we, uh, we we did a master plan for Catholic schools in Baltimore City back uh, with uh, a, a consulting group in, in 2015, and we realized that the presence of Catholic education on the on the west side of Baltimore uh, was absent. And we really felt that we needed to reestablish a presence in the west side. So, with the help of uh, Michael Sipe uh, from the Southwest Partnership and and Bill McCarthy, who some of you may know from the Catholic Charities, we were searching for property on on the west side. Uh, we looked at old, old you know older schools to see if there had been a renovation possibility, but really, when you looked at it and the fact that we needed 21st century educational facilities. It was very important that we build a brand new facility, and lo and behold, that that day we came to your uh, to Jay Perman's office with you, and we looked out that window, and I did say we're going to build a school there. Uh, I wish it was twelve acres; it's probably closer to three. Uh, but you know, we've done a nice job of uh, you know putting that uh, school up on that campus. So, if I could, uh, before I you know talk a little bit more about the school, I'd like you to sh I'd like to show you an animation that we did. Uh, with Whiting Turner and uh, our partners, JMT Architecture Firm, uh, as we uh, designed and built this new school. So I'm going to see, Alex, if I can make this video work. I'm going to share my screen. And uh, I'll, if you don't mind, I will talk a little bit as, this, as we go through this uh, animation to give you a sense for uh, the school itself. So is the animation up? Yep, it's up. And let's see if this thing will actually move. It's about a six minute animation. Uh, you, you're actually looking right now at the front entrance, which is right across the street from UMB. Uh, and we're coming into the front entrance of the school, which is a two-story entrance. Uh, you'll see Mother Mary Lang actually on the wall. Uh, Alicia and the team right now are working on the uh, artwork that will go into the school. Uh, the first floor of the, uh, of the school, uh, basically I would call the Early Learning Center. Uh, the school will have pre-K-2 three and four year olds uh, as well as kindergarten. So the early learning center is all on the first floor. Uh, this will give you a sense for the uh, design of the classrooms. I'm sorry, it's pre-K three and four, not pre-K two. Uh, but all, all the technology will be very much 21st century with panel displays in every room, touch screens displays. Uh, you get into the kindergarten space, you'll see cubbies in the room uh, as well as uh, Laboratory facilities will be actually in the classrooms themselves. We're going to scoot down on the second floor, and this actually gives you a glimpse of what an elementary classroom would look like. Uh, the lockers will be on the, in the hallways, as you can see. Uh, we'll have a one-to-one -one program. Uh, every, every student will have a laptop uh, and a nice configurable 21st century uh, furniture in the, in the classrooms and nice views of the city outside the windows. On the second floor as well will be a library media center. Uh, we're working on a green room right now. Uh, Alicia and I have spent some time with uh, WBAL and helping us design the uh, green room as well as having potential partnerships with the television station with their news anchors. 
If you go up to the third floor, uh, Alex mentions the technology capability in the school, the STEM focus. This will be a robotics lab. All our Catholic schools today have robotics and is a programmatic function as well as 3D printing. And there also will be uh, the ability for us to do uh, programming inside this laboratory as well. Now it's directly adjacent to the science lab. So you can go between the two, uh, two facilities. I'll get to the science lab in a second, uh, but there's an art room with a kiln. Uh, so we'll have a dedicated art program at the school. And in conjunction with that, as we, we're going to scoot outside this classroom, we're, I believe we're going to head over into the music room. So music is a, is a key component of the, of the program as well. Some of you may have heard of our Cardinal Sheehan uh, Choir. They've, they've sang at uh, Ravens games. I uh, have been actually on, uh, on The View as well as Good Morning America. So art I mean, music is a key component of our academic programming at the Archdiocese. Uh, this is the uh, science lab. Uh, you can see the lab stations are around, around the perimeter of the classroom, uh, as well as a uh, exhibition table at the front for the teacher. What a Catholic school would not be uh, without a, a chapel. Uh, the chapel overlooks Martin Luther King Boulevard and UMB across the street. So you can see Jay and for now uh, Jerry Bruce's office. Uh, but the bottom line is you know, Catholic education is critical and Catholic identity and values that we teach in our schools. Cafeteria is very, very spacious uh, with a wonderful kitchen. So we will do all of the uh, Cafeteria support right out of the facility itself with its own kitchen. We're going to slide down the hallway now into a 75,000 square foot or 7,500 square foot uh, gymnasium. As well as the, the gym will also serve as a meeting place for the whole, for the whole school uh, with a stage for performances. So we're gonna do a 360 inside of here and you can see, actually you can drop down a panel, a, a blue panel at the top so we can divide the, the gymnasium into two separate uh, areas for uh, gym, gym classes. So now we're gonna drop down and we're gonna go do a 360 around the property. As Alex mentioned up front, in addition to the 7,500 square foot uh, gymnasium, we'll have a, a artificial turf field, which is almost complete today. Uh, it fits nicely into the community. The architecture is very consistent with uh, the Martin Luther King area and the houses in the, that surround the school. There'll be a uh, playground for pre-K two uh, for the pre-K and, uh, and kindergartners, as you can see right as you uh, look close to the school, and then of course this, the uh, field that is being built as we speak. There'll be an entrance off of Lexington Street, uh, so for weekend community activities and access to the uh, cafeteria as well as the gymnasium, and that will be able to be secure and sectioned off from the actual administrative and classroom spaces. So that, that's that's a quick tour of the school. As uh, Bruce said, you know the construction. We we're talking about the construction is moving along at a pretty good pace right now. Uh, if you would like to see, here's where the actual construction is. It looks just like the uh, vi the video we just showed you. You can see the traffic zipping by on Martin Luther King. Uh, working with UMB, we positioned a uh, a camera in the garage right below your office, Bruce. Uh, and you can see on the back side here is where the turf field has actually been laid. And I think uh, Alicia's got some current pictures as of today that we'll share with you in a, in a few minutes. But as you can see, the construction is moving along at a very, very fast pace. Uh, we're hoping that the final construction of the school will be completed by the beginning of March. 
uh, which will give Alicia all the time that she needs working with her staff and so forth to get the school ready uh, for the beginning of the school year in September of 21. So that, that's kind of a preview of the school itself. Uh, we are really proud of this investment that we're making in, in West Baltimore uh, for the children of Baltimore City. Uh, with that, I, I, I can turn it over maybe to Alicia. And Alicia, maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit, give yourself, give it a little background, and maybe talk a little bit about the programmatic things that we're planning for the school. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Alex and Dr. Bruce, for allowing me to be here today to talk about Mother Mary Lane Catholic School. I have been an educator for the last 21 years. I've been a principal for the last 10 years. And this assignment is no, like, no other assignments that I've ever had. I am so excited to be the first founding principal of Mother Mary Lang School. Our school culture is going to embrace Mother Mary Lang's virtues of faith, hope, and compassion. Those are the three things that we are going to use to guide our school community. With, uh, my goal is to work in partnerships with parents so that we can empower our students to become positive change agents for our global society. I want our students to understand that when they are at Mother Mary Lane and they are looking out the windows of Mother Mary Lane and they see the University of Maryland, they're like, that is where I will ultimately wind up for college. I'm excited about the opportunities that Jim and Donna have allowed me to for the last three months. I, we've been working with partnerships as um, Jim alluded earlier with the University of Maryland at Biopark to, to be able to expose our students to STEM related fields. I'm a mathematician. I call myself that by trade. I love math. I taught middle school math um, in the Archdiocese of Baltimore as well in Baltimore County. And I want our children to love math and science. Um, also, we are going to look at STEAM because we have to look at arts. You know, so I'm ex very excited about that. In regards to academics, we are going to be following the Archdiocese of Baltimore curriculum, which we know meets and exceeds. Our students will be academically rich and challenged in their classes. We want this. We want to educate the whole child, not just the academic component, but their mind, body, and soul. And that wouldn't be complete if we didn't follow Mother Mary Lang's three things that I mentioned earlier: faith, hope, and compassion. Um, I've been doing some parent talks with our two communities that we're merging together, Holy Angels Catholic School and St. James and John's families. They are excited about the newness of the school. They are excited about all the different programs. We are going to have a host of after school programs for our students in areas of STEM and areas of arts. We have a wonderful green room. My goal is to have the students broadcast news day to day have real live forecasting equipment that the students have never been exposed to. I've never been exposed, so I cannot wait to see the children's faces. I visit the school weekly, and today I was actually visiting, so I have some pictures of what the actual turf field looks like. So give me one second so I can share. Okay, well, this is the gym. Our gymnasium, it looks like the rendering. The actual scoreboard is up and it's ready to go. I actually hit some hoops the other day in there. So I'm a big basketball fan. And then our turf field is actually down. It, it, it looks wonderful. The kids are going to be excited about playing soccer and lacrosse. That's me modeling for the wonderful school. <laughs> and so I'm hoping and praying that we reach out to the community because it's a community school. Yes, we are merging two schools, but we want our community partners to also look at our school and invest in it, as well as send their children to our school. We can hold up to 520 students, so we have plenty of spots for students outside of St. James and John's and Holy Angels. Oh, did I stop sharing? I'm sorry. Okay, that's it. Right. That's it. Well, that was uh, first of all, thank you both for those wonderful pictures. I just want to remind the uh, participants out there in the audience that uh, we're open for questions. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of questions out there, but let me start with one. Uh, you mentioned you're going to be serving uh, lunch there and other meals. 
Are you going to be able to use the local businesses and the and the nearby community? What's your plan there? That's something that UMB has been very committed to in terms of using the local businesses and help them to not only survive but thrive. Any thought to that yet? Well, well we, go ahead, Alicia. Uh, we currently have an arts diocese and um, food and nutrition plan, and we planned on using that um, for our students for lunch. We also serve breakfast in the morning for our students. But you know, as far as community engagement, uh, you know, Alicia has already been out in the community working with them and building relationships there, along with Michael Sipe and, and the rest of the Southwest Partnership. Mm -hmm. Bruce, you know, our intent is to engage the community full fledged uh, and also more importantly to educate their children at the mm -hmm. school. The one thing is we have been doing right now, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but we've been working with Dr. Stephen Zen uh, over at Children's Hospital uh, to be able to provide. Uh, services for families, uh, also looking at physicals for children, uh, vaccinations, uh, hearing, uh, vision, and dental, as well as uh, programmatic things so on, you know, healthy, healthy eating habits, as well as healthy living. So, Stephen Zen, Dr. Z, Dr. Zen has been phenomenal working with us so far as we start to plan out what we're going to be doing to help the community uh, and the students that attend the school. Right. So, you, so I think you can all see that uh, not only do we have this wonderful school across the street, we have a bio park, we have a community engagement center, we have a corridor almost connecting uh, these two entities, and of course a corridor connecting UMP. So we're finally getting a critical mass. Uh, and 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 part of the reason for asking about the local businesses is because, of course, they're important to us too. In terms of that critical mass, so I think that's that's uh, something for you to keep in mind. Now, you had talked to uh, Dr. Perman and, and me earlier about the idea of what was going to be the composition, the mixture of the local community, the UMB community, and other people in terms of uh, kids at your school. What's your current thinking, and what kind of objectives have you set for that? Well. It's Go ahead, Leash. <laughs> so currently we want all our families from Holy Angels and St. James and John's to know that they have a spot at the school. Our school can fit 520 students. We have open slots of about 200 children. So we are open to the community. We, um, our website is up. Our school admin is up. We are re ready to register new students for, whole, for Mother Mary Lane Catholic School. So in right. regards to are we open? Yes, we are open. We're open for partnerships with the University of Maryland. If they want to send the employees want to send their children. I've been talking to the community members that are right outside of our school. I've actually knocked on a couple doors, finding out if they have children, if they want to enroll in our school. So it'd be school. nice to walk across the street to school, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be, <laughs> exactly. it'd be nice to change, exactly. right? Yeah. <laughs> Today so many families drive their children to school. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to walk. You know, we actually have children that uh, attend Holy Angels Catholic School, Bruce, that uh, uh, are live in that neighborhood. So mm -hmm. they'll be able to come right to the new school. Uh, but, you know, Alicia has reached out to the community, and we really would love to have uh, employees send their children to, to the Mother Mary Lang Catholic School. As you know, as we said up front, you know, we started pre-K-3, uh, pre-K-3s and 4s, you know, up into kindergarten, all the way up through eighth grade. So the continuity is there for a family to send their children all the way through elementary and middle school. Well, it'd be phenomenal for UMB families to be able to have their children go there as well. And mm -hmm. I, I mentioned to you earlier that we have a live where you work program here at, at UMB and it provides significant support and close to 30,000 when you aggregate the city support and UMB support and other support for them to buy renovate, move into uh, the local community. And we've had very good participation of our faculty and staff in this program. Uh, I know there's over 40 families and we're, we're, we've got uh, funding to add additional families uh, into this program. So we will have not only kids going to school at your school, I hope, but families living next door to your school as well. That's certainly an objective. Mm -hmm. now, Alex, I hear we've got a few questions. Uh, we well, might as well move to them. Well, we do. Let's start with uh, Courtney Jones Carney. Courtney, are you there? I am here. 
Go oh, ahead. All Hi, right. Hi, folks. Good afternoon. Um, so just for context, um, I attended a Catholic uh, primary school outside of Philadelphia, and my son started in a pre-K-2 program at a Catholic school in Northeast Baltimore. And, and so, you know, Catholic schools, Catholic education has been really important to us across generations. Um, but one of the questions that I have for you, specifically, I am raising a black boy in Baltimore. And mm -hmm. so I would like to know what sort of strategies you have working within the Archdiocese of Baltimore requirements for hiring teachers and administrators thinking about whether there are religious requirements, uh, whether the teachers have to be Catholic in order to teach certain subjects to ensure that that um, I'm sorry, teachers and administrators are reflective students across social identity. And so that seems to be a bit of a concern that some parents have when they're thinking about uh, Catholic education. The students are pretty much there's good diversity with the students, but perhaps that becomes an issue with with teachers and administrators. So I was hoping you could speak to that. Okay, Alicia? I can speak a little bit to it. Yes. So all Catholic um, principals, administrators have to be Catholic school administrators have to be Catholic. Um, in regards to teachers, they um, at Mother Mary Lang, all our teachers will be state certified. Um, in regards to teaching religion, in order for a teacher to teach religion, they will have to be Catholic. And so you find in some, I've been in several, that if you have an elementary school teacher that is not religion, not Catholic, another teacher will come in and teach their Catholic um, religion to those students. So only um, Catholic teachers can teach religion. And all administrators have to be Catholic in regards to principles. Am I correct, Jim? Yep, that's correct. Uh, Alicia, what about Courtney's question of raising a young black boy in Baltimore in your school? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I'm going to tell you the percentage of students that will be at Mother Mary Lang will be 99% African American. I am the mother of raising two African American boys. And I know that, you know, research says that African American boys learn better when they are engaged in their classes, if they're doing things with their hands. And so when I'm interviewing teachers, because the staff has not been selected yet, I am asking those questions. I want to know about teaching strategies. I want to know about how do you engage your students? And so when I'm asking those questions, I'm pulling out thoughts and processes of how they're going to engage all types of students, not just African-American boys, but certain words I'm looking for that are going to trigger to me to say that this is the right person for this classroom. But in specifically African-American boys, we all know that they learn better by doing things with their hands. I, like I said, I'm the mother of two. And so I'm stressing to myself, and, and Jim and I just had a conversation about this, that we have the right teachers in the right space at Mother Mary Lane Catholic School, but they have to be state certified as well. Jim, anything to add to that? No, I mean, Alicia is a, is a uh, experienced principal. Um, she knows the area. Uh, you know, she was at St. Bernardine's uh, as, as a teacher and as an administrator. And then she also was a uh, principal up at St. John Paul. And most recently was a principal at uh, St. Mary the Mills over in Laurel. Uh, Alicia knows the area. She knows how to, she knows the environment that she's going to be leading. And she is going to make sure that we have the very best teachers. When the Archbishop and I were building this school, we said, look, we got one shot to do this right. We haven't built a brand new school in Baltimore City in 60 years. West Baltimore needs a strong Catholic school. So we're going to do it and we're going to do it right. And we're going to pick the best leader for that. And that's Alicia Jordan. Great. Alex, do you have another question uh, for us? Yes, we do. Michelle Evans is asking about, you, you talked about the, the, the plans and the, where some of the students are going to come from existing schools. Michelle, uh, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Hi. Um, um, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Salinger and and Ms. Jordan. Um, I appreciate it being able to see the inside of the um, the planned inside of the the new school. It looks like it'll be a amazing property. And so, um, I had a question about um, where the the students from Holy Angels, um, which is currently on the property that was Archbishop Keogh and then Seton Keogh, um, what is the plan potentially for that property? Um, I'm interested as a uh, uh, graduate myself of Archbishop Keogh and my daughter as a graduate of Seton Keogh. 
So I'm curious to know what's going to happen to that property. Uh, that property will, is, is for sale. Uh, we are currently entertaining uh, bids for redevelopment of the CEQ campus. Uh, nothing has been decided at this point in time. Michelle didn't tell you that she's a real estate dealer, <laughs> right, Michelle? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, certainly interested. Right. <laughs> you know, the, 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 you know the, the area is right there with St. Agnes Hospital, of course, as you well know, uh, as well as the old Cardinal Gibbons campus and so forth. So, I mean, how that the Seton Keogh property eventually plays into everything there will be, you know, important to the community. Great. Alex? Well, as you might uh, as you might know, we have many people on campus who are involved already programmatically. They're involved in the community. They're very interested in how all the programs that you're going to provide are going to work with everything we're doing. So let me bring in Mary Beth Bollinger from the School of Medicine. Mary Beth? Hi, how are you? Um, I'm, the, I'm actually on faculty at the University of Maryland in the School of Medicine, as was mentioned in the Department of Pediatrics. Um, I run a mobile clinic, the Breathmobile um, through the University of Maryland, which is a free mobile asthma clinic for kids um, with asthma in Baltimore City. And we've been providing care for over 18 years, um, primarily actually on the west side. And Jay Perman, um, when he was my chair of pediatrics, was actually the one that started us with us. Um, I'm actually a product of Catholic school education from kindergarten all the way through college. So. Uh, we certainly didn't have any uh, schools like this. It's just beautiful and it's so exciting and very much needed for the West Side um, since we're there all the time and we're, we're excited to hopefully um, collaborate with you and bring our bus to your school. I see there's some space to park out front. That's some of our, one of our limitations, but that's, it's just very exciting and congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Beth. So, Alicia, maybe you could spend just a second. I mean, we've been working very closely with uh, with uh, the biopark as well as with uh, Jim Hughes at UMB, et cetera, on uh, some programmatic things uh, with the biopark and the university uh, as we finalize our our construction and get rate right open. Yes, we went eventually. The goal is to have several after school programs for all students. Um, some of them are focused on primarily STEM for young ladies. We want to expose our young girls to fields of STEM. Then we have some um, programs for students starting as young as in third grade. We also have some programs for after school um, in the summertime. Some, you know, camps can be very, very expensive for parents and we wanna be able to offer an extension um, from school that are STEM related activities. So those students would transfer into our summer program, which would be offered for about six weeks. Also in conjunction with that, um, I think we spoke earlier in regards to teachers, they go to school to be trained in one particular area, um, elementary education. And so they may not have all the multiple hats to teach more advanced things in science. And so the goal is to partner with the BioPart to provide externships for our teachers so that they can be able to take simple skills and elaborate in a more visible and real world application for our students to, to be able to force the critical learning skills. And then last but not least is to offer, um, we know we can't have um, the certain scholars that the University of Maryland has, but we want to start our own scholarship um, fund for our students and starting with about 25 students that are, um, will be called Mother Mary Lang Scholars. And we want to track those students as they leave Mother Mary Lane and go on to high school and eventually go on to college to see how effective our foundations that we laid for them while they were at Mother Mary Lane. So we have a couple of things, you know, brewing in the pot, I say, um, <laughs> for our students. And I'm just really excited that um, we'll be able to expose our kids to so much more beyond just a textbook or beyond just a, a program on um, that they can watch on TV. They will have actual real world application. Yeah, you're referring to our CURE scholars. And of course, yes. we now have students in the 11th grade. Uh, it's been very successful and we're sort of waiting for them to propel the college. Uh, so it's an exciting time. Uh, and, and I look forward to learning from you what you've learned in those programs and obviously 
any way we can help, of course, we're open to doing that. So that'll be an exciting problem, uh, uh, like exciting cohort. No problems, no problems, no problems. No problems. <laughs> exciting cohort. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, uh, Alex, I uh, got another question there. Sure, I do. Yes, yeah, I, I'm going to read a question that may or may not come from someone who is uh, related to someone we all know on campus. Uh, her name is Jordan Rhodes, and she writes, uh, did you retrofit anything design-wise as a result of COVID? Ah, you want to take that, Alicia? Because we did. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> we just went back and redesigned our house suite. And so it was originally it was designed with curtains to separate spaces, but now we will have three full blown isolation rooms with walls because we want to make sure we're prepared for COVID. So that is one that was one huge thing that we've um, taken on over the last three weeks. Am I correct, Jim? Yeah. But 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 also from a classroom size perspective, you know, okay. you saw from the animation, the classroom sizes are very nice. Uh, so, if in fact, we are in a situation, which we hope we're not, if the vaccine comes and we, we get back to some sense of normalcy, uh, and we can still social distance the kids inside the classrooms. Uh, you know, we're right now shooting for 25 students per classroom, but you can see with the size of the classrooms and the reconfigurable furniture that we can go social distance. And just uh, as, as an aside, I mean, if I can do a little, uh, update on what's going on in Catholic schools right now. You know, we are open. Uh, we've opened 44 schools. Uh, we've been open since August 31st. Uh, we off, we're offering in-person instruction across the 44 schools in conjunction with parents who want to stay virtual uh, synchronous learning from the classroom. So we're, we're really happy about where we are right now. The parents are excited with the fact that we've been able to bring children back in the classroom. Uh, you know, they were out since last March. And I'm happy to say we've had them in the classroom since August 31st. That's not to say we haven't had positive cases. We have had positive cases in the schools. However, the, the, the transmission has been from family member to student. Most of the transmissions that have occurred in, in the Catholic schools since we are opening is from parents to student, uh, from siblings outside of the Catholic school system to student, uh, rec leagues, uh, you know, whether it be lacrosse or soccer or so forth, uh, we've had no student to student transmission inside the classroom, and we've had no teacher to student or student to teacher transmission in the classroom. And as of, uh, I think the date was, and I don't have the current data, we had like 60 cases across 11,000 students uh, as of November 2nd. So, you know, we're managing this and managing it very, very well. There's one other comment and one other statistic, and I've shared this with Dr. Redfield from from the CDC because Dr. Redfield has been engaged with us. Uh, you know, we do we pull children and and teachers and so forth when they're a close contact of a presumptive or a positive case. Uh, as of that date, we'd had pulled like 400 kids uh, or or staff, and of the presumptive cases, only seven cases have have occurred. So we've avoided through, you know, pulling children out additional cases in the classroom and avoided spread. So we've had no outbreaks uh, that were caused but uh, by student to student transmission inside the schools. Those, those are pretty good numbers, Jim. Uh, a question I think that perhaps the questioner also had relates to air conditioning, filtration, UV light. Well, uh, particularly okay. in terms of the new building, a any thoughts there for either of you? Well, as far as UV light, uh, there's nothing in, in the construction right now, I believe, Bruce, around UV light, but, you know, the, the filtration systems and so forth are all, you know, 21st century. The isolation rooms have their own uh, fil uh, own air conditioning systems and so forth, mm -hmm. so that uh, everything's isolated. Alicia, anything to add there? No, we are fully air conditioned. That's what parents want to know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for some, of, some of the, will not be burning up. <laughs> yes, for, for some of the listeners who've gone to Catholic schools in the past, it's not always been a, a, an enjoyable task because uh, no air conditioning. So, you know, and we'll I be closing because of of the heat index. We have air conditioning. <laughs> That's great. 
That's great. Alex, what, what you got next? Well, I want to bring in Heather Eshelman. Now, you've answered some of her questions, but she's very enthusiastic. She has children in your school system now. I thought maybe she'd want to add a little bit to uh, what she was inquiring about. Heather, are you there? Hello. Heather? Well, she writes. Hello. Oh, go ahead. Can I, you hear me? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Go ahead. Go I've ahead. I've been in the system before. Um, I'm just really grateful um, to you all for being here today. Um, President Gerald, I thank you. Um, I, I congratulate you on your new position um, as president. And um, I'm Heather Ashelman. I've been with UMB about almost two years. I'm working at the Maryland Center of Excellence on Problem Gambling. So we do help problem gamblers and their families. Um, but it's just really great. Um, I went to St. Mark in Catonsville and also to Archbishop Keogh. Um, and um, my Catholic education and faith have served me very well, and I appreciate all the teachers and principals have done over the years. But my question was um, for Mr. Selinger, I was just gonna ask for an update on COVID. My children are at, at St. Mark in Catonsville, and mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel like it's gone very well, although the middle school had to close due to a couple of cases. Um, but I just wanted to thank you as a parent for giving me a choice to either send my kids virtually or in person. I know that was a privilege that not very many parents were able to do. So I just um, am so grateful um, that the Catholic schools were able to open. And I just want to say, um, Mrs. Rotel is the principal there. She's awesome. And the staff, teachers have been phenomenal. So. I thank you for your dedication and um, just very happy with uh, the education I received and my children are receiving. So thank you. Well, Heather, thanks for thanks for the comments. I mean, we've had had some cases at, at St. Mark's, and as I was, you know, trying to articulate earlier, I mean, you know, when we have a presumptive case or a positive case, we've been very aggressive uh, in pulling cohorts out to avoid, you know, spread. And that, ta that that strategy, or I should say, the, the, that pra practice has worked very well for us across the, the schools. You know, we're hopeful that we can get everybody back in in a timely manner, 10 to 14 days, depending on the situation. You know, you, you hope that the presumptive case doesn't turn positive and we can get the kids back in faster. Uh, the one thing that you probably heard that we're gonna do this week, uh, right after Thanksgiving, we're gonna take three days uh, we're going to be running virtual for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday after Thanksgiving, just to allow, you know, if anything symptomatic would occur, you know, we can get get ahead of it. Uh, plus, give everybody a chance to settle down a little bit after the after the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. You know, we saw a little bit of a spike uh, in cases across the system uh, after Halloween. You know, people were having parties and people were getting together and so forth and so on. And as a result, we did see some positive cases. However, they were all, you know, outside the school environment. And that's what we really need to do is, is and I really appreciate what you're doing to make sure that if there's any symptoms in your house that, you know, to keep the kids home. Uh, mm -hmm. And that that's so critical. The parents, our parents have been wonderful and we need to continue to be vigilant and disciplined. As I said on the news last night with Tim Tootin, uh, as we talked about Anne Arundel County, uh, but the bottom line is uh, it's it's the dedication and commitment to, of parents like yourself that trust us and have been working in partnership with us to ensure we can stay open. Thank you, Jim. And you know, I saw Tim Tootin on the TV last night with you, and it introduced him as Doctor Tim Tootin. And I looked it up, and he's got he's a a Doctor of Divinity. That's right. He actually was. He actually went to St. Mary's Seminary for the yes. Divinity program. Yes. He's a pastor. Yes. I was so impressed with that, and I didn't know that. That was a new piece of information. So, uh, Alex, uh, what you got next? Hi, Mary Phelan has got a couple of questions. Mary, are you there? Hi, I am here. Thank you. Mary. Thank you for taking my question. Um, so for the new school, do you anticipate a way in which students from all of the UMB professional schools will be able to contribute to um, programming or student development or some type of uh, partnership with students at Mother Mary Lang uh, is my one question. And then my other question is, 
I saw your beautiful chapel and I wonder, will it be open uh, for mass to people outside of the school community, like someone from UMB who wanted to come over for mass? Well, before we take so, the first, take the first question and I pick probably do the second. So the first question, yes, I will. I would love to have a partnership with teachers um, from UMB to come over and partner with um, our teachers at Mother Mary Lane. We are currently working with um, two other colleges to try to get um, teachers that are going through teacher training and to come over and, and work in our school. So yes, I would say yes to that, to that first question. As it relates to the chapel, I mean, the chapel is really, is a school chapel for, you know, it's only seats 40, 40 people. Uh, I'm not sure how frequent we haven't laid out the programming yet for the school as far as uh, how many masses we'll have each week and so forth. Down the road, it might even be possible on the weekends that we might be able to hold mass up in the, in the, in the chapel for individuals in the area that would like to go to, you know, the Mother Mary Lang School for, for mass. We'll have to work that out with the local pastors and what, what kind of uh, frequency they want to say mass at the school. Yeah, Mary, and one thing for me to add is uh, there's several people who have been working closely with Alicia, uh, Jane Schaub at the Biopark, uh, Dr. Gia Greer McGinnis, who uh, leads the Cure Scholars, uh, Ashley Bayless and Brian Sturdivant uh, through the Community Engagement Center. And so there's a, there's a robust connection there. Uh, and I know we'll be looking to uh, deepen uh, those relationships uh, over time. So those things, those connections are made, and I know you know at least one of them, probably all four. So uh, that'll be that opportunity as well. You know, one of the things I was thinking about, Bruce and, and Alicia, I mean, tutoring. I mean, tutors, yes. you know, tutors would be great, you know, uh, for the students. Yeah, and a number of our schools have a rich history of tutoring uh, to the West Baltimore community and other locations. So that's something that people will definitely be interested in. Yeah, I'll add, I'll, while we're talking here, Alejandro Ortiz was also asking about opportunities for employees and students. You know, it's great to be involved as a mentor. You get so much out of it. We talk about that with the Cure Scholars and we, we see the results. So anything that, uh, that you can do, he's interested in. Great. Great. Okay. Okay, Alex, you got another we, one? We don't have any more questions right at this moment. I know people are scrambling to get in before uh, we're out of time. I, I've got uh, one or two uh, for, for Jim and Alicia. Um, a number of these students are gonna be obviously from lower income families. What sort of your support structure, safety net, uh, uh, ways to help those particular families and students uh, get through the, their students' education? Any thoughts on that? Now, are you speaking about from a financial perspective? Well, I'm sure it's financial, but as we've all learned, it's not just financial, it's Chromebooks, it's it's all kinds of other support as well. So broad support for these students and their families. Well, financial, um, we do have Archdiocese aid, and Jim, you can um, further expand upon that. But in regards to mental and physical, we will have a full-time guidance counselor on staff. We also will have a full robust um, resource um, resource lab, which we will have a, a math specialist as well as a reading specialist. But the main part is having that full-time guidance counselor to talk to the students, to talk to their families, to figure out if there are any outside things that need outside of the school, the day-to-day. But in regards to financial, we do have Archdiocese A, the school for, First through eighth, we are trying to do a one-to-one -one, um, situation with Chromebooks and laptops. So, you know, financial aid is is very much a, a key component of our community schools in the city. Bruce, uh, Partners in Excellence, is, which was started by Cardinal Keeler many many years ago uh, with Chip Mason. You know, they've given tens of thousands of scholarships to low-income children to attend Catholic schools. And the Partners in Excellence program is alive and well. Uh, so we do have a significant amount of financial aid that we contribute today to children that attend uh, our Holy Angels Catholic School as well as St. James and John. And that will continue going forward. In addition, you know, when Larry Hogan came in to be the governor, he established the Boost Scholarship Program. 
Uh, the Boost Scholarship Program provides a uh, scholarship to children who are eligible for free or reduced lunch. Uh, the amount of monies that they receive if they're eligible is $4,400 if they're eligible for free lunch and $3,400 if they're eligible for reduced lunch, which significantly eats into the cost of tuition at the, at the new school, which will be about $6,000. Uh, $6,000 for a high, high quality Catholic education is, is a bargain. Uh, it's actually cost us more than $6,000 to educate the kids because we actually subsidize the actual op opportunities for uh, families inside the school. You know, fundraising is a key component of any operation. You know it from the university, right? So how do we, you know, balance tuition income with, you know, fundraising income so that the balance, we can balance the books on the bottom end, bottom line, which is what you know, Alicia and I have already talked about. So, I mean, this is a, a significant investment on the behalf of the archdiocese to build this brand new school. We're going to do it right with the right uh, resources and teachers and so forth, but also we got to make sure we have enough money behind it to ensure that we can help families who really want a Catholic education have it be, have it be affordable. Well, one of the things I think we've learned from the Cure Scholars is that wraparound services become important. Uh, during COVID, uh, it's not just been uh, Chromebooks, it's been food support, it's been other kinds of support uh, so that they don't slip uh, during this period of, of sort of being uh, locked, not locked in, but, you know, secluded into your house. Uh, and so we're finding that that's as important to success as the mentoring and other support as exactly. well. You know, and, and uh, at least you mentioned the child nutrition program. I mean, we're federally subsidized. Uh, we have a child nutrition office here at the Archdiocese that uh, we operate in the, in the Holy Angels right now and St. James and John providing breakfast, lunch, and snacking, uh, after school snack for children. So, you know, being able to be nutri nutritious food, right, uh, to ensure the health and safety of the children. I don't know if you want to add anything about that, Alicia, but. That, that is a key, no, I mean, that's, that is a component. That's important, but it was really important for me to have a full time guidance counselor, someone on staff that the children can go and talk to, because I think sometimes schools think it's okay not to have one, but they are they are a needed part of um, the staff, especially now with this pandemic going on. Children need an outlet, somebody else to go talk to to kind of feel the emotional sides of them. So. Right. Uh, another question I had was that uh, I noticed that um, uh, we just recently had National Black Catholic History Month. Uh, that was a new one to me. I didn't know about that one. Uh, and I know that the Archbishop uh, led a special service, and he's certainly talking about Mother Mary Lang and her example. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, Black History, but Black Catholic History Month and, and the kind of activities that you've been holding for that? Alicia, I have, to lean, I have to lean into you on that. Donna's not on the. Donna's not on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I would love to answer that. Um, but, but historically, I mean, you know, from your other experiences as a principal. Um, we, I mean, first of all, the month is in November, and so we always start off with All Saints Day, and we honor all saints. But then, um, as a school, um, in my previous school, we take the time to acknowledge, um. African Americans, Catholic, Black African American Catholics, and we take the time for the students to acknowledge who the, who certain people are and to have a background of them. Um, I've been a parishioner at St. Bernadine's Catholic Church for over 20 years, and Mother Mary Lang has always been someone that we talked about. I remember being a teacher at St. Bernadine's, and I remember with Father Miller that we talked about the canonization of Mother Mary Lang, and then, you know, now 20 years later, we're still talking about that. But the thing is, during Black Catholic Month, we want students to be exposed to all African American Catholics um, so that they understand that when they see pictures and tiny saints and things of that nature, there are people that look like them that are a part of the history of Catholics. Yeah, so that's an important message, and I, I'm glad to hear you're doing that. And We'll certainly need that uh, in this school as well. And Alex, do you have one or two yeah, closing I, I questions? Have a, just as you were talking, and Patricia Fanning, one of my former colleagues, uh, and, and, and she latched onto this just the way I did, reading about Mother Mary Lang. She, she asks, how are you going to teach about her legacy 
and why the school is named for. This is a great opportunity for kids to really be inspired by uh, everything that she did. Well, first, um, in every single classroom, there will be a picture of Mother Mary Lane. Um, those pictures are framed and donated by the Ivelate sisters. In addition to that, there is a Mother Mary Lane um, prayer that we will say as a school community every single day when we open up our school. In addition to that, every student will know who she is, um, not just by pictures and not just by, you know, the prayer, but the, the examples of her li living as a faithful person, living with compassion, those things will be exhibited in the Mother Mary Lane school culture. So our students will be very aware of who she is and why that school is named after her in order for them to be a member of the school. That's, that's my goal. Um, when I was a principal at another school, we had a mission statement. We read that mission statement every single day and the kids knew what that mission statement was. It's gonna be the same thing at Mother Mary Lane. They're gonna know who she is and how they are connected to her, not just being a student at that school, but how they are connected as African-American students in Baltimore. Right. Jim, do you wanna add anything to that? No, I'm just saying she's got it down. <laughs> well, that's what principals are good at. That's why. She, that's why she's the principal and the chancellor. <laughs> gotcha. The other, Alex, the other question, do we have any parting gestures? Well, yeah. The other question is is an anonymous question, but I think it's a, it's a good one. It's about the community. Uh, someone wrote, uh, "Can you talk about the ways that you plan to work with the community and how you've already included the community in your decision making process?" Because this is your community now, so you need to be a full-fledged member. And uh, what, what, uh, how are you doing that? Okay, so currently, I'm. I've worked with the Southwest Partnerships. I've met with their met with them on a couple occasions. I'm actually meeting with the community organizers for the elementary schools and the high schools that are sitting in our surrounding areas. We meet um, actually every other Thursday, as well as um, meeting with community organizers one one Thursday of the month. So I'm trying to put myself out there and let them know that Mother Mary Lang is a part of the community and we're not going anywhere. You know, so we, we have to work together. And I know before I came, there was a lot of groundwork that was laid in the community with Donna and Jim and trying to get the community to understand that we are not gonna be a gated school that sits on Martin Luther King. They are a part of the school. We want them to you know, apply to the school. We want them, their children in the school. And so the only way to do that is to ungate yourself and say, come on in. That's Catholic, Catholic the word Catholic means universal. And so we're gonna live by that example on Martin Luther King Boulevard. That's great. That's a you know, great you know, from the get you know, from the construction, you know, when we started talking about the construction, Bruce, you know, from that first day we engaged with the community. Um, you know, they've had input into what we were designing and how we were gonna lay out this the property and so forth. And uh you know, we're looking forward to working with the community with Alicia at the, at the helm. That's spectacular. So I, I think we're about out of time. First of all, I want to thank Jim and Alicia for being on with us. This is a great uh, uh, addition to our West Baltimore community. Uh, thank you for that. Second of all, I hope that we see significant students from UMB's families uh, in your environment. And I hope we have uh, significant live where you work families near your uh, school as well, because that means that we'll be making significant progress uh, in terms of of improving our neighbors, making them part of us and us part of them. That that's part of the objective here. Hey, Alicia, Alicia what's the uh, website? <laughs> it's www.mmlcs.org. <laughs> Mother Mary Lane <laughs> Catholic School. Catholic School. <laughs> So the website's up, the uh, enrollment uh, applications are up. So come one, come all, we will we'll welcome you with open arms. Now's Thanks your chance. Our Facebook page, you can see updates of what's going on at the school. Cause it's gonna fill up, I have no doubt about that. So, yes. so, <laughs> so thank you all. Uh, for all of those of you in the audience, uh, thank you for attending. I have one piece of advice for you and, and that is be careful over Thanksgiving. Uh, this virus is in full bloom right now. Uh, it's it's in our environment. Uh, please protect yourself. And Thanksgiving dinner is unfortunately one way 
to protect yourself. That is to keep it a very limited group. So I urge you to use a lot of discretion in these unusual times. So with that, I will bid you all adieu. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And, and Jim and Alicia, this is a wonderful opportunity and I'm so looking forward to, to the next step. So thank you much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll see you. Bye. Bye-bye.